Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 27th. Today we're going to be taking a look at the system that's coming through our region Sunday into Monday for the Pacific Northwest. We'll take a look at what we can expect from that. We'll take a brief look at the storm on the east coast there too. It's really ramping up. Some winter storm watches are going up for that system. And we'll take a look at our extended forecast through the Pacific Northwest. First of all, we're looking here at the visible satellite imagery. You can see that inversion still just locked in eastern Washington and Oregon. Still for the Puget Sound also, but there are some breaks already through the region here. And if we look, you can see there's some breaks going on for San Juans. This fog layer is generally thinner. Most of the Willamette Valley is good except for the southern portions, but we should get a better burn off today than even in the last two days. See the glorious sunshine through the higher terrain as well and on the Washington, Oregon coast into British Columbia, Vancouver Island. And you see the snow highlighted nicely here on the higher terrain around the region. You can see that fog still entrenched in most of the lower valley areas for British Columbia. And notice how far this fog made it up into the, some of the east slopes of the Cascades here. There's some easterly wind, and it's really causing some high winds through the gorge here. 80-plus mile per hour gusts there at the Vista House there through the gorge, east wind coming through. So that's what's going on around the Pacific Northwest today. Take a look at the rest of the country briefly here. You can see the east coast storm. The watches are going up. We'll take a little bit of a look closer to that here just in a second here's the uh this air stagnation advisories and dense fog advisories a little bit freezing fog advisories for eastern oregon there and some wind advisories for the southwest you can still see we have some winter weather advisories for the great lakes there too for some snow taking a look here you can still see we have the air stagnation advisor dense fog advisory and we're really going to break this up as we get into sunday we'll get some wind in here and then we should get a flow reversal as we get some onshore flow on into Monday and Tuesday. So we're really gonna clear that up into next week. And then we'll look at the extended on what we can expect after that. Just taking a look at the current water year precipitation status. You can still see on the drought monitor, there's still some pretty extreme drought going on, especially Eastern slopes of the Oregon Cascades. And this is just a reminder that some places are still, uh, you know, still under drought through the East portions of the state. You can see Western Washington portions of Western Oregon are just fine, but you know, we still need precipitation for the eastern portions of the state. That Some of that snow will help that fell in the Cascades of Oregon and Washington will help mitigate some of this drought uh, advancement as we go into the spring and next summer. But we still need more over there, as you can see. And here we are for Flagstaff, Arizona. You can see there's a wind, there's some wind advisories down there. Peak winds will be Thursday night. So if you have any interest all the way down there in Arizona, check that out. Here's that winter storm watch out there for the East Coast. You can see they've got a nice briefing there. They've got some gale warnings out over the water. Um, expecting some pretty strong winds with this system. There's a little bit of model disagreement still going on just where the heaviest snowfall amounts are going to be. Like they mentioned here, a sharp cutoff likely on the western side. And it could be further east even. It depends on which model wins out here and just how the storm develops and moves up the coast. But you can see some heavy snowfall potential up the east coast here coastal flooding also as you get this strong northeast wind driving the waves into the coastline there and winds and wind chills as well and yeah so check that out if you have any interest out there keep a heads up on that here is that storm developing here you can see as it moves up the coast you see it pulls this cold air all the way out to the coastline here freezing temperatures all the way out to the coast very chilly air just off the coastline here as the storm moves up and the snow um, shield is going to expand on the northwest side of that and bring that snowfall. As we go into what we can expect as far as snowfall amounts, this is the NAM here. The NAM shows a pretty good snowfall across the entire area here, especially up for uh, Massachusetts, Boston area. And the GFS paints a little bit of a different picture. I just wanted to highlight this here too. You notice how it keeps the snow a little bit farther offshore and the heavier amounts further north Cape Cod. So there is some model disagreement still going on here. It could make big differences on this cutoff on the west side. So checking out the Pacific Northwest here. Let's back this up a little bit here. And you can see the gorge winds that were just roaring through the gorge this morning. I had a friend up there had 80 plus mile per hour gusts. And you can see the Stampede Gap bringing some winds through. So it's it should be mixing things up a little bit better through the Puget Sound today. Not much relief for eastern Washington. 
and you can see these offshore winds going on the coast. What a day to be out there, glorious sunshine. And here comes the next system here. So this is the European model here. And you can see it, it's basically bringing an atmospheric river through the region here. It is on the low end, it's maybe a category one. It's a very weak one, but it is bringing some decent precipitation amounts. But we should be able to handle these amounts. We've had a, a period to dry off. <clears throat> a lot of this is gonna fall as the form of snowfall in the mountain areas. And then as this atmospheric river moves through, we're gonna go colder behind it and bring the snow levels down and possibly a convergent zone through the Puget Sound. And so somewhat of an interesting system on the heels of that. Here's kind of highlighting that this is Sunday afternoon. You can see we have the southerlies through the sound, clearing out our air very nicely. And as we go into the future here, you'll notice we start to get this wraparound effect. We get the westerlies down the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Chehalis Gap is active here. And now we're getting a Puget Sound convergent zone forming in here. And then you'll see it progress, this north wind, northwest wind come down the sound here. So the convergent zone to be somewhere in the central sound here by Monday afternoon. And then you can see it would progress through the sound. So Looking for an outside chance of maybe a lightning strike or two, maybe some small hail and maybe some uh, snow levels down below a thousand feet through the region. You might even see some mixed snow mixed in on the higher terrain around the Puget Sound. And we'll see how that turns out though too. We still have a few days to watch that system as it comes in. But you can see it brings mostly snow to the mountains. You can see the rain of course for the lowlands. Um, this should reach fairly far down into Oregon here too. So. That's good. You know, the Cascades there are going to need this snowfall as we go into spring and summer. <clears throat> so looking here at some snowfall total amounts, here's the GFS. This is looking out quite a bit here. So let's back up and you can see the snowfall coming through. This is about on Tuesday afternoon. So, you know, it's it's something. It's not a major storm or anything, but some areas of the northern half of the Cascades in Washington are getting some good snowfall amounts as well as the coastal mountains through British Columbia. And we won't go into the extended just yet. But here's what we're looking at now. So you can see all this cold air kind of coming down into the central port of the portion of the country here, spreading out as the storm develops off here. This is the that big East Coast storm everybody's been talking about for the last few days here. And as it moves up the East Coast, you can see that it's got a nice lobe of cold air with it. We're looking at temperatures at 2,500 feet, this kind of it just gives us a better view on this map anyway. So as we go into Monday here, you can see the slope of cold air just kind of swing by us here to the north. And it's going to stay mostly east of the Rockies. This was what we were looking at for a while in the extended with the potential of getting into our region. It looks like we're just going to miss this. And we're going to get that weak system moving through Sunday and Monday. But it's not going to be that <clears throat> Arctic cold that we were thinking was possible. You can see it just missed off to our east as our ridge is just a little bit too close to our area to allow this Arctic air intrusion into lowlands of Western Washington, Oregon, and British Columbia for the most part. It's going to get chilly. It's a, it's a chilly system, but it's not a big lowland snowmaker. And as we go into the extended here on the GFS, I just wanted to show you this again in the GFS kind of shows this ridge retrograding a bit and then shows some colder air start to develop over British Columbia. And this is a classic pattern here for some cold air getting into the region. But when we check out the ensemble runs, this is when ensemble runs and ensemble modeling is very effective because this is the operational. It looks like it's out on its own too. If you're just looking at this, you're like, wow, maybe something's going to happen in mid-February. But it's always good to be able to check with things like ensemble. So let's go to the, let's just go right to the ensemble run on the GFS here. And you can see the ridge going through. And here comes our weak system for Sunday, Monday here. And the Arctic air stays mostly east of us. And then the big ridging builds. And you can see that this ridging isn't going away into mid-February, according to the ensemble runs. Now, granted, this is the 06. It was a different timing. This, I was looking at the 12Z earlier. But you can see that well out through mid-February, February 12th, it doesn't look like that intrusion. You know, the models aren't in agreement about that. So we have basically there's no confidence in that GFS run. We would have to see some kind of example of that pattern in the ensembles before we would even enter, think about entertaining that possibility. So that's what's going on now, you know, and of course, look, we get to look at this every day. So we get to watch these ensembles. If we start to see the sign, we get to talk about it. If not, that's fine. 
but yeah, we do get that system. It could be fun, especially if you see the Puget Sound. You know, as these convergent bands move around. We might get some precipitation in the form of snow on some of the higher hills, even. But it's not a big Arctic blast at all. And same with like Vancouver Island. You know, there could be a conversion zone coming off of that. So there could be some areas of lower snow, but it's not going to be a big, you know, there's not going to be big ice blocks on the sidewalk or anything like that. So anyway, hope you guys are enjoying this afternoon breakouts that we've been dealing with here. And if you get a chance to get out to the coast or up in the higher terrain, you've probably been enjoying that too. And it should break out pretty well in the Puget Sound today, it looks like. And some fog redevelopment tomorrow, but then we should be starting to stir things up a bit as we get into the weekend. So that's good for the air stagnation side of things. So I will have another briefing out tomorrow and I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Make sure to click subscribe, turn on your notifications. And if you want to join and support the page, click that little join button down below there and sign up. And I've got some gear for sale on there too. I'll try to post a link for that also. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks.